Okay, so we're putting in some uh, some bathroom fixtures. Theoretically, this is going to be drilled out, and we're going to put a some sort of uh, sink on top of that. Um, she has this pull chain line here, and she wants switches on the walls. We got one of these here. This is anything within six feet of water has got to have a ground fault circuit. So we have to have ground fault interrupters. And so, like this bathroom here, there's a ground fault interrupter. So we need to do that. And the thing is, okay, here's where here's the back end of that bathroom. This line is not hooked up yet. That has to have a GFI in it. Who knows how many, uh, so this is a takeoff of the washer. Covering. Just plugged in there. So basically, what we have to thing is, is that there doesn't seem to be any attic access here. No attic. Oh, this is quite a project. Uh, toilet goes right here. Toilet's easy to install. Uh, the sink's gonna go in here. She wants me to chop these up. Shorten them, make holes in them, whatever. So we can put a sink and a drain in here. But this lighting situation uh, is a little tricky because we don't have any crawl space. This is actually a two-story. From what I know, there doesn't seem to be any access to go up inside here. So it's going to be tricky for the wiring. And it's probably going to come from underneath. Looks like the sockets come from underneath. Okay, so, so there's that one plug on the outside of that bathroom area. This is the new plumbing. There's the plumbing for that toilet area. And there is the, whatever, the breather pipe for that toilet going up that. Not sure where it's going up. It's going up going up to the somewhere outside that is the drain pipe for the, the shiny part the silver part it's the drain pipe for the new sink in the bathroom and there's okay there's that white wire coming down coming in the, in the washroom so that what white wire ties in over here so that white wire is probably running. Okay, there's another socket it's running to. And then, yeah, they did, they did a lot of plumbing in here to put another toilet in there. And so this, this is the washroom line. I'm not sure exactly what the washroom requires. Um, that one goes out. Looks like it goes. Oh, there's a socket on that wall, and it branches off <coughs> um, to a couple more. So it's probably got three. It's looking like uh, one, two, one, three. It's already hooked into three sockets. And then plus this. Oh, that doesn't look good. And that would be the fourth socket. It's running a lot of sockets. And I hate to have breakers break on me, so I'm thinking I should have to run another line. And uh, I do know the copper wire is pretty expensive these days. I know that part. This I do know. So that's running over there. To another socket and this one runs back to the that's gonna be running to the breaker. So it's running about six sockets I think. And I'm thinking we need to get a dedicated circuit. that quite the collection of items down here 
What we have to do is we have to, yeah, so the sockets are coming from underneath. There's power up here though. So somehow or another, might have to cut a hole in this, bring a switch up here, uh, run a line to that light possibly. It's, uh, it's not a real easy job. So, yeah, so these, boy, that doesn't look too good. So it burnt there. So, yeah, these wires actually come from down below. So we're gonna have to investigate the basement or where the crawl space and figure out how to uh, run a wire up through here and put a switch in. She actually wants two switches and she also wants a ceiling fan. So I don't know how we're gonna put a ceiling fan in there. This is a uh, two story once again. And there, Notice that ceiling looks about even right there. Yeah, I don't know how to put a ceiling fan in here uh, at this point. I mean, it's definitely not an easy job. You might be able to have the fan vent out in here, possibly. Uh, or, yeah, no, that would be tricky. I, you might be able to put one on that wall, possibly. Um, uh, would be nice, but let's take a look underneath, see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the bathroom remodel. This is the first time I've done this. I'm just winging it, winging a prayer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in this, put a sink in this, put this here. Faucet sink made out of that. Something different. We're gonna put a door in here. We got the doors. And we're gonna put a closet here. This is the bathroom vanity, once again. And we have to cut a hole in this marble to put the, uh, what they call it, vessel sink in that. And we have to cut these down a long way away. I'm going to cut these off, got the water shut off. I'm going to cut these off and then uh, put the angle stop valves on those. I'm going to get some trim, put some trim around here. She wants a new light and she's also talking about a different shower head with a wand and Put that in. We got the toilet. Wide mouth toilet. And we got this. We're going to put a 20 amp circuit in. This is the double D. This is the double D. So there are two styles of double D. Basically, there's a narrow style and there's a wider style. So this area here where it plugs in is wider. And then this is the narrower style. So we're going to put a new circuit in. And we also have these remote control switches, which are pretty cool. You don't have to be cutting wires because if we had to, they've already put the drywall in there. If we had to put switches in, um, we'd have to cut and make holes in this, and that would be an awful mess. So this is the remote control switches here. I actually got these on eBay. I couldn't find them at my local store. You could probably find them on Amazon. This is basically the switch, just the wall switch. And it's kind of a piezoelectric uh, setup here. And basically there's two parts. This is your input here. This is the AC input here. This is the output to the light. And so basically, uh, I think once this thing is hooked up here, it sends the frequency out to this thing and it works accordingly, which is pretty cool because I kept thinking, well, I'm going to have to dig through the walls, poke holes in the walls, 
you know, run a line through there, but these are only like 20 bucks, so I got three of them. I'm going to run a fan in there, too, on a remote control circuit. Hopefully, these will, these will last for a while, because otherwise, um, yeah, let's see, what does it say here? Uh, anything important? Apparently, these can run, uh, they can actually run fans as well, so it's not like this has to be a kind of a high voltage. Oh, there's a battery. So there is a battery in here. Some of these will actually work on the, whatever, the, when you click it, it creates a piezoelectric uh, pulse that uh, activates a switch. Anyway, let's see, uh, it's a 12 volt battery. Package was 12 volt battery installed. This is apparently a mini 12 volt battery in this thing. Yeah, so that's basically how it works. Pretty easy. No wall wire or anything. Okay, so let's see if I can set this camera up. So these are what they call the stub outs. I'm on the camera. So these are the stub outs. And I'll move the camera over a little bit. And so, what we do is we're going to have to cut the sand off. Got my handy dandy cutter here. And once we cut that end off, then we can put this thing on. We can put that on right now, as a matter of fact. And I think we need, it's got to go in here, probably half inch. So we've got to leave a half inch sticking out, something like that. And of course we had to buy these. And so once we get that all in there, then we can tighten it up and then we can start to get ready to put this toilet in. Ideally you want to put the flashing or the trim, the baseboard on first. But since we don't have that, we're not going to do that. Okay, so this thing here, I think we need to cut it off. Just to be safe, I'm gonna cut it off about here. Get a little extra sticking out, just for good measure. Uh, that seems a little bit loose. We got pecs in the back of this, so probably be a little bit loose. Then we got plenty of. We just slowly tighten this up, go around here. Now we're gonna leak a little water, most likely, because we got water in this line. And we don't want it all over the place. And slowly but surely tighten this thing up a little bit as we go. And we want to clean this pipe up a little bit. I did shut off the water, by the way. And it's been draining for about five minutes. Hopefully this is already plumbed on the back. We don't know what's on the back of this thing. But, uh... If we can clean this thing up a little bit here. I think I got some steel wool here in my pocket. Theoretically somewhere. In the back of the pocket. We'll just clean that up real good. And then we want to kind of deburr this area here. Because what happens is if these are not smoothed areas, this one actually has a little deburring tool here on the back. You want to clear off all the little, little little snags and stuff so the water doesn't eddy around it and kind of thing. Okay, I think we're good with that. Side here. 
think we're all good there. Overdoing it now. Take all the glory I can get in this town. So, when we put this back on, clean that up just a little bit more. There's a little bit of paint over on this side. I don't want any issues. I want it to seal real good. It should be fine now. So, put this on first. A little discussion. Discussion action. And put that on. No, put this on. This thing. And then this thing here, I'm going to make it stick up. I probably want to put a little bit of pipe thread on that. Pipe thread goop. It's for good measures. Okay, just like that. Got a little goop on it. Not too bad. First time. Okay, that part worked. Put this on for the toilet. You put the toilet in, we got a seal. And actually this toilet, I don't know if it came with a seal or not. Um, we got a seat. Yeah, we got a seal. We already had a seal in there. We didn't need to buy a seal. And we're going to put that toilet together and then put that toilet in here first. Uh, actually now I need to buy a uh, whatever the P-trap for that, for the sink. Cut those off. Put those angle stop valves on. And uh, we're rocking and rolling here. Okay, got these all on. And so basically we need to turn the water back on. Turn the water back on. Turn the water back. Now you're not supposed to do this actually in our county because they want you to call and make an appointment with with the water company. And I better turn this back. They don't like to have the water shut off at the meter. They want you to have a valve at the at the house. So far, so good. No leaks. Yippee. Hallelujah. Okay. So, we're all good here. I'm going to start putting the toilet in next. Okay, it's always nice when I get to blame my job on somebody else. Um, what's happened is, uh, the, uh, the plumbing down here is not hooked. You can see that goes right down outside. You can see some of the conduit right in there. That plumb is not hooked up all the way. So they did a, kind of a half-assed job there. So we got to call the plumber and tell him to come back and finish up because uh, this ain't going to work. But meanwhile, we can uh, assemble the toilet, get ready and maybe start working on that wiring and, uh, and then put the some of these switches in we could put the remote control switch in possibly so yeah oh it's nice to blame your job on somebody else right Okay, so that door was a nightmare. It took us almost like two hours to put that, get that door in there right. The floor is uneven, the walls are uneven. It's a big mess. But we finally got it going. So, it seems to be fine now. And so all I gotta do is put this, put some sheetrock on that wall, put a stud in the middle, and that part's done.